This lizard looks like a dinosaur. With its armored scales and a powerful crocodile-like tail, it's no coincidence that its name would be the Chinese Crocodile Lizard. Crocodile lizards come from cool forests of southeastern China and northeastern Vietnam, where they spend most of their time in and around shallow streams hunting invertebrates and other small animals. Imagine a creature that's so ancient that it's the last of its kind. A living fossil from a time when dinosaurs still roamed the earth. It's the last survivor of an ancient clade of lizards that has existed for over 120 million years, defying extinction while its relatives faded into history. But despite its prehistoric resilience, this animal has tragically become one of the rarest lizards in the world due to habitat loss and poaching. Some experts say there might only be 1,000 of them left in the wild. Thankfully, conservation breeding programs are in place, and their captive population is also growing thanks to the dedication of repticulturists. The big problem is that getting your hands on these unique reptiles is borderline impossible. And when they do pop up for sale, well, they cost a fortune. Aw oh, man, getting one? Nearly impossible. Getting three? Well, I guess I'm just the luckiest guy in the world. I've had my animals for a few years now, and this is the year I'm hoping to breed them for the first time. But they're not alone in this mission. Enter the black-breasted leaf turtle. Basically a walking, googly-eyed cartoon character. These creatures are one of the smallest turtles in the world, and yes, they are also unfortunately endangered. I've got six of them, and I'm beyond excited to finally try my hand at breeding them too. So what exactly is the big challenge? Well, what if I told you that some of the coolest and rarest reptiles on the planet need to go into a deep, chilly rest before they can make more adorable mini versions of themselves? Sounds weird, right? But it's true. Reptiles usually make us think of warm, tropical vibes, but these guys need to feel winter before they can even think about making babies. It's a process called brumation, a reptile's version of hibernation, and it's absolutely essential for getting them in the mood. And since winter is wrapping up fast, I have to get to work. Step 1. Convince these reptiles that winter is coming. That means turning off their heat lights and letting the enclosures get cooler for a few days. Step 2. No more food. That might sound mean, but trust me, it's necessary. When reptiles get cold, their metabolism slows way down and digestion pretty much stops, so we have to make sure that they don't have any food sitting in their system. Now that they've been prepped for brumation, the real challenge begins. Will this process work? Can I successfully recreate the winter conditions they need? And most importantly, will I finally get some baby lizards and turtles? Stick around because we're just getting started. Today, we'll be setting up their cozy little hibernation pads. Think of it as like a five-star hotel experience, but instead of getting the room service and whatnot, they, they get absolutely nothing. Well, I guess not nothing. They'll get to wake up once in a while, and if they're super unlucky, they'll see me creepily watching them and making sure that they're alive and okay. Yeah, that'd be kind of like nightmare fuel. No food, no light, just pure darkness and dreams of crickets. Yep. We've got soil, we've got moss, and a dash of love to create the perfect sleep sanctuary. Let's get these sleepy heads tucked in for their long winter's nap. What's up everybody, my name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatus channel. If you're new here, I make videos about specialty pets such as reptiles, amphibians, and different kinds of cool invertebrates. So if that's something you're interested in learning about, definitely consider subscribing down below and ding that little notification bell afterwards so you don't miss any of my future uploads. All right, everyone, first things first. If we're going to brumate three Shinisaurus and six black breasted leaf turtles, we need nine individual containers. But wait, these aren't airtight, are they? <gasps> these creatures need to breathe. So, let's get to drilling some ventilation holes along the sides. Nothing too crazy, just enough airflow to keep things fresh, but not so much that the bins will dry out too quickly between my, um, <laughs> creepy checkups. Now that our bins have airflow, let's make them comfy. If I were going to be sleeping for two months, I'd want to cozy up too. So, we're using a mix of Zilla Jungle Mix and dried sphagnum moss. 
Simple, effective, and just fluffy enough for the five-star reptile relaxation. <laughs> Top it off with a nice cork slap for hiding and a shallow water dish, and boom, we've got the reptile equivalent of a luxury winter lodge. Now, it's time to prep for the animals. The leaf turtles get a VIP spa treatment, a 24-hour soak for maximum hydration. Very important, because nobody wants to wake up dehydrated after a two-month nap. And as you can imagine, the Shinisaurus don't get this special treatment because, well, they live in water every day. All right, everybody, here are the leaf turtles. Hey, guys. Hey, little foot. How you doing, buddy? E.T. Who is not looking too happy with me? Here's Yoda, she's slightly larger than Ducky here. Hi Ducky, cutie patooie. And then here is Spike. Hi Spike, how you doing buddy? He's the newest of my turtles, a little over, I guess a year and a half ago. Turtles are hydrated, now it's time for weigh-ins. I'm writing each weight on their respective bins, making sure everyone's accounted for before tucking them in for the big snooze. Precious cargo is packed and ready. Shinisaurus next, except they're not nearly as cooperative. They are spicy, biting, running, general chaos, good times, not so much. All right, everyone is secured, and now comes the nerve wracking part, choosing the perfect brumation spot. I tested a bunch of different areas of the house with a digital thermometer and hygrometer, and the best spot ended up being my hallway tiles, chilling at a solid 60 degrees Fahrenheit. The animals stay there for a few days to slowly cool down before moving them to the final destination, which was an upstairs walk-in closet near the attic that consistently sat between 50 and 54 degrees Fahrenheit, perfect for a cold, steady temperature. I use these Govi thermohygrometers to accurately monitor the temperatures and humidity levels in the brumation room. They come with an integrated app that allows you to easily track the parameters and even set alarms and notifications for extremes, ensuring that you'll be notified if temperatures or humidity levels ever reach certain high or low variables. I want to be clear that this isn't a sponsored mention, but I do really like these devices and would recommend them to fellow hobbyists. If you decide to purchase one using the referral link in my video description, I'll make a small commission for my pets at no additional expense to you. All right, everybody, here is the setup for now. I'm pretty nervous, but I think it's gonna go well. So everybody's in here, they have a water dish. Govi meter is set, I have alarm set, and now we're gonna do the two months. Two months for the shinies, they'll be back out in mid to late April, and then maybe a little bit longer for the leaf turtles if we can get that much cold out of this winter. Bye guys, I'll come check on you in a week. Now, as I sort of alluded, putting these animals into brumation or winter dormancy is a process that gives me a lot of stress and a bit of anxiety, if I'm being honest. There are risks involved, and I love my pets immensely. The idea of something going wrong through this is terrifying. I'd like to know from you for today's question of the day, what is the one thing in your experience keeping your pets that is sort of giving you the most stress or angst? We all face it. Out of the love we have for our pets, there are things that give us stress and anxieties. You know, whether it's vet visits, our pets getting sick. I won't go further because I need to leave you some options, but let me know in the comment section down below. As always, I'll give your comment a heart and we can engage in a little bit of a conversation. Thanks, let's get back to the video. After a week in the dark at 50 degrees Fahrenheit, I went to check on everyone, quietly topping up water dishes as needed and making sure all was well. The first couple of days were stressful for me since the animals were still active and awake, but soon enough they settled into their hides and drifted off for the big snooze. By the way, by the time you're watching this video, their brumation period has already finished, so be sure to stay tuned for future updates. Oh boy, oh boy. There we go everybody. The leaf turtles and Shinisaurus are in their brumation bins upstairs. Temperatures are dialed in. I think we're gonna do just fine. But I think I can confidently say they're set up well. Comment your well wishes down below if you like. And I can't wait to hopefully reproduce these species in 2025. It is a little surreal for me to look to the left and not see any turtles in any of those enclosures. But that also means that we're gonna do something very special in that corner. So you better stay tuned for that. Cause I don't even think I hinted at it in my uh, last video. 
No, I didn't. Well, I'll tell you now, we're gonna set up six new leaf turtle enclosures on this rack. We're removing all the bins and they're being replaced with nice enclosures. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you, thank you so much to my patrons over on Patreon. Thank you so much for your additional support. With that being said, take care everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your week. See you guys.